Hello, I'm Mike Ross, and this is a three minute video about recent trends in solar energy in the UK. Let's start with the good news. As of June 2024, UK solar capacity stood at 16.9 gigawatts, a whopping 18,000% increase since 2010, when it was a mere 0 0.09 gigawatts. But to meet the UK's target of having 70 gigawatts of solar capacity by 2035, installations will need to grow by around 4 gigawatts per year. Of course, the UK doesn't have vast areas of land which could be used for large solar farms, but there are over 2 billion square metres of south-facing commercial roof space in the UK. If panels were installed in only 25% of that area, they could generate another 25 gigawatts of power, with a further 8 gigawatts coming from installations in car parts. Germany, for comparison, already has over 40 gigawatts of rooftop solar power. Obviously, as lawyers, our focus is on the legal issues that may arise for our clients from this shift towards solar power. For those involved in the supply chain, one of the key legal risks is around greenwashing. This is sometimes seen as a concern that's confined to businesses selling to consumers, and it's certainly true that the risk there is higher. But business-to-business -business advertising is covered by the Business Protection for Misleading Marketing Regulations 2008. And like consumers, many business customers, particularly SMEs, won't have much expertise when it comes to solar power. So whilst the case for solar is certainly compelling, it's important not to oversell it. For businesses wanting to install solar generation capacity on their premises, this can be quite a daunting prospect. Compared with, say, buying energy from a traditional utility provider, there's a lot more to consider, such as planning consent, landlord consent, levels of expected performance, maintenance, what happens when the installation reaches the end of its useful life, arrangements for exporting excess electricity to the grid, and how to benefit from renewable energy schemes. Many providers offer deals where they install and continue to own the panels, with a financial return being generated by selling the electricity to the occupier for a period of around 10 to 25 years. This is often done under what is known as a power purchase agreement. This model allows a customer to receive solar power from an installation on its premises, but with zero or minimal upfront capital costs, and often at a discounted rate compared to electricity supplied by the grid. But it does typically mean that the customer is tied to the relationship with the supplier, which will need to work for the longer term. We have considerable experience advising on complex solar projects for a range of different clients, from suppliers and infrastructure investors through to developers, landlords, and businesses looking to harness solar power to reduce their energy bills and meet sustainability targets. So if you think we can help, please get in touch. For more commentary on the energy and infrastructure sector generally, see our regular Infrastructure Spotlight publication. Thanks for watching.